Hi, Gary Stearman. Welcome to another update from Prophecy Watchers. And I have in studio with me a, a man I've gotten to know, and and his books are phenomenal. I'm I'm holding one right here. It's called The Pentecostal Rapture of the Church of Jesus Christ. I want you to meet <clears throat> author Jack Langford. Jack, welcome to Prophecy Watchers. Thank you, Gary, and the Lord bless you, and the Lord bless His Word. Well, His work is amazing. It's beyond human comprehension, and, and I get a real sense of that when I read your books. That is to say, you, you move into uh, the realms of, of uh, the deeper meanings of Scripture. Mm -hmm. And your book, The Pentecostal Rapture of the Church of Jesus Christ, really caught my attention, and I have read it very carefully <clears throat> and agree with it, and it's the product of a long, I think, as I see your life, uh, you know, as an outsider, mm -hmm. you have grappled with spiritual issues for a long time. And there's a, a lot of that that shows uh, in the maturity of your, of your book. And I really appreciate that. Because I don't think these, uh, these truths come easy, you know. You, you have That's to correct. sort of work your way through them. And the rapture of the church and its relationship to Pentecost is almost a hidden truth. It has not been capitalized on by pre-tribulation or rapture teachers for a long, long time. It's, it's kind of been a, we think so, or it may be, and we can toy with the idea. Mm -hmm. But here I explored in, in enough depth, and of course you had already come to the conclusion yourself yes. a number of years ago uh -huh. on that subject, and this complemented in your own mind that reality. It is, we're not twisting something to try to make it no. conform to the rapture. We're presenting something in a very systematic way that would show, yes, the Feast of Pentecost was prophetic, a feast day, prophetic of resurrection and ascension. And here's proof of it. And here's its relationship to the other feast. And here's its relationship to the pre-tribulational rapture of the church subject. And boy, is it true. Is it beautiful? It is beautiful. The truth is beautiful. <laughs> and, and I just want to tell you that Jack has a way of incorporating uh, really uh, easy to grasp uh, patterns and truths and then documenting them with Scripture in, in ways that are just uh, beautiful. And and I really enjoyed the book because it linked uh, many of the features of the Old Testament and Pentecost of course goes back to the giving of the law and is a very very special part of, uh, of the Jewish uh, festival cycle and that the, the two loaves that are held up on Pentecost are just so beautiful when you really grasp what, what is being shown. And then when you come forward into 1 Corinthians and and an order of the resurrections is given. And, and Jack has written a book here called The Threefold Order of the Resurrec Resurrection of the Righteous, which will just really take you point by point, detail by detail, uh, uh, through a picture you may not have grasped before. And that's, I think that's what God wants to do. It put things in pictorial form so they'll stay in our mind, right? That's correct. And the Holy Spirit of God who moved upon Moses, way back there, to give the initial feast and the ritual system was the same spirit that moved upon the Apostle Paul and others to interpret their application for us today. And what a beautiful completion there is to it. The Word of God is complete. It will thoroughly furnish us to all and every good work. And it will furnish us to the truth there is a pre-tribulational rapture, not merely to simply escape the tribulation, but it's God's order for this day. It's one of the avenues where He will show even to the angelic world His unmerited, our, His kindness to us. The grace of God will be a package that will be demonstrated throughout the angels throughout history. We don't deserve to go anywhere. How true. Step down. But we're going up by God's grace. That's His plan for us. And by our soberly walking in these truths, like I mentioned, I guess, at an earlier meeting, every man who has his hope in him purifies himself. Right now they're offering a tour over in Israel, in Jerusalem. They've uncovered some of the old 
mikvahs, the baptistries, mm -hmm. that people would purify themselves before they went up into God's presence in the temple area. And you can see those ritual ceremonial pools that are there. They're still there. Well, they're not filled with water today, but they were at one time. But the same is true, we're going up to meet our Savior. Yes. <clears throat> Purify yourself. Bring your life into subjection to the Word of God and to His order for us today. One of the beautiful things, burden in Paul's heart, is he wanted to present his saints blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus. Wow. When I hear a man who has a burden for me like that, it melts my heart. And I want to follow. I want to. <laughs> Paul was a contentious fella. He was a troublemaker, a <laughs> ringleader of the second Nazarene, and blah, 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 blah. But listen, he, was a, he loved his people, and he would die for them. Absolutely. And they loved him, too. And there was a, right. an affection there. And so uh, we need to purify our yeah. hearts and ourselves as we look forward to that Pentecostal rapture of the church of Jesus Christ. Everything else is going to be left behind. Now, when you say Pentecostal rapture of the church of Jesus Christ, you don't mean the rapture is going to occur on Pentecost. That's you correct. Mean that Pentecost is a type, picture. a picture of the right. rapture. That's Let's correct. Let's talk about that a minute. We've got about five more minutes here. Okay. It's a fact that it was celebrated on the 50th day in Bible numerology. It's symbolic of completion, mm -hmm. fullness of completion. In 50, fact, it's special. Uh, would, would be the number of Jubilee, for example. That's right. When the fullness of that specified time came of Jubilee, then slaves would be freed and, and landowners would, uh, who lost their property would get it back and right. so forth. And it simply symbolized when God wanted that time period over with, it was generally spoken of in terms of the 50th. And the same way with the observance of the Feast of Pentecost. It was 50 days after the wave sheaf of at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Christ our Passover sacrifice for us, and He's our resurrection. He is the first fruits of them that dead. Start counting, 50 days later, when the fullness of time came, and the day of Pentecost had fully come, boom, the church was born. And when the antitypical Pentecost is fulfilled, boom, the church will be gone. Just as quickly as it came, it'll be gone. And I think that you put that into uh, believability mode better than anybody I've ever seen write about it. Uh, I think when you uh, read Jack's book on the, the Pentecostal rapture, the Church of Jesus Christ, things will click together because he has the ability to put details in palatable form, <laughs> which is not an easy thing to do in a book, by the way. It's one thing to do research and put all your research uh, between book covers. It's another <laughs> thing to do research and make that research uh, available to someone who's never read it before. And that's what uh, this book does, and that's uh, why I'm so excited about it and so excited to have met uh, Jack, Jack Langford. Uh, I, I see you open your Bible to another section there. Well, I just opened open it up to the, the diamond of the book of, Rome, <laughs> of Romans. Yeah. The chapter 8 where Paul ties together the blessings we have. In Romans 1 we're all, he establishes the fact that men are sinful. 2, both Jews and Gentiles are sinful. And the world is, in chapter 3 is under the curse. But in chapter 4 you're saved by faith without works. 5, we have peace with God. In 6, we're identified with Christ in His death, burial, and resurrection, we can now walk in newness of life. Mm -hmm. In chapter 7 he compares what it was like under the law of Moses where you thought and wanted to do good things but you couldn't do it. Ah. But now we can. Chapter 8 we have the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So the Holy Spirit has taken up his residence upon the earth and he's the administrator of this particular age of grace. In Romans 8 we have the fact that the same Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in us and will raise us up from the dead just like it did Jesus Christ, Romans 8, 11. And then over in verse 23 he adds, not only that, 
But we also have the first fruits. <laughs> the first fruits. Christ, the first fruits. In us, it's transferred to us. Even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. That's when the rapture of the church takes place. This is the feast of first fruits. Wow. This is the offering of first fruits. We've got the first fruits in it. Here's the feast we're offering. So it symbolizes us being caught away to meet the Lord of the year. So the church was born. Our birthday signifies our going home to be with the Lord. Amen. And you can see why I was eager to introduce uh, Jack Langford to you because he's got enthusiasm backed by documentation. I'm telling you the documentation yes. in your book it will bring, bring all this to life in a, in a remarkable way. When you brought the props with you today, the first fruits and then the, the two loaves <clears throat> at the, that the priest raised up at the end of 50 days uh, I have to say the most impressive thing about those loaves is the aroma. <laughs> and I've said this <laughs> to Jack. Yeah, I never thought of it before <clears throat> but there's nothing more appetizing and appealing than fresh bread. And that's the, the body of Christ. The beautiful truth that is <laughs> revealed in the Word of God. We're not saved by works, but we're created unto good works, which God has before ordained to walk. We are His workmanship. That's why it smells so good. Yeah. That's why when we're caught up it would be a blessing to God, our salvation. We're His workmanship created for good works. So anyway. Wow. Wonderful. Jack, thanks for having come by and uh, <clears throat> spent a few minutes with me at Prophecy Watchers. We appreciate it and I want you to come back again. You've got a lot sure, to say yeah. and we need more time to, uh, to talk about uh, your books and your ideas. We've barely touched upon them. Jack Langford, <clears throat> a great author. Uh, look for him uh, in the uh, Prophecy Watchers online bookstore. Just hit the online bookstore, scroll down, you find Jack Langford's name. And we're going to have his books <clears throat> there for you. I'm Gary Stearman. Jack, come again, okay? The Lord bless you and we will. All Lord right. Will. I'm Gary Stearman. You keep watching. We are. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter or follow us at facebook.com slash prophecywatchers. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.